Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to be here and uh, to make that presentation to such an audience. I thank uh, the chairman of his uh, good work. And uh, I will begin with the, my presentation, which is relevant uh, to an additional capabilities that are being asked to the electronic warfare equipment uh, and has to be uh, squeezed, as the uh, commander has said, into the already existing equipment. So we have to uh, get it uh, making, uh, say, space for this further fun functionality that is being here. So what is the need that is being asked? The, uh, as you can see, uh, the, a real-time data link, that means something which is working in real time, has uh, the capability or offer the, the capability to increase uh, the uh, or effectiveness of onboard systems because they can provide a coordination and a synchronization of the functions performed by multiple platforms and this is through a very swift uh, exchange of data and commands flowing from one aircraft to another. Currently, the platforms are already endowed with uh, uh, data links, but they are data links uh, which has a, a certain rate of uh, exchange of data. It's uh, a rate that has to be followed, and those rate is not uh, cannot provide the functionality that we are talking today because uh, they have a latency within uh, the exchange of those data. And thereafter, there is the need of having uh, this uh, real-time data link. What is uh, the functionality it can provide or it can improve? It can improve, as you can see, the situation awareness by giving a real-time data and also, and this is something that will uh, be not yet available, but it will be introduced uh, in the next uh, future, also to send image sharing due to the fact that the link is a very large bandwidth link. It has uh, a very important uh, uh, characteristic in, in that uh, it can be uh, exchanged, uh, the uh, immediate detection of a pop-up threat among uh, the wing uh, of uh, the aircrafts. Then it can perform multi-platform instantaneous uh, threat geolocation as well, and this we can see, also being capable to do it not only for geolocation but also in the case of uh, air situation. <clears throat> Further, it has, and we will show some example during uh, the presentation, can have a coordination and synchronization of the wing defense and attack operation. And uh, it can, through the exchange of data, immediately perform uh, what is called uh, a, an inhibition sector on transmission from one aircraft to another in order to avoid to jam our friend aircraft when, whenever in operation. Last but not less important is the coordination of uh, jamming techniques among aircraft in order to perform a more effective uh, countering of uh, the radar threats. So, Having said that this is our goal, and we will see how this can be achieved, we, the required characteristic are that we need uh, to have a very large bandwidth and uh, to have it uh, quite instantaneously to be fixed. We will see that uh, this can be implemented through the use of uh, phased array jammers, receiving and transmitting, that are one of the say, point of force of our architecture that is already on board of some uh, uh, Indian aircraft. So one of the uh, 
point is that those real-time data links are directive beams which can be directed only from aircraft to aircraft and via the two-phased array which are present on each aircraft. And that's providing, due to the fact that it is a narrow beam and will a very good side lob reduction, to be also stealth in the case that any type of ESM could, could, be, could try to detect that communication. The first example that I am showing is the, the example of having three aircraft in a, in a counter air patrolling mission. So they are flying and try to, to survey the airspace and they are working in, si in rather silence in order not to have uh, to be detected by opposite uh, ESM equipment. With the own ESM, we are able instead to detect uh, the enemy airborne pulse radar or even the interrogator friend and foe, if, well, especially if the enemy aircraft are on their territory. The three aircraft exchange data one to the other, and uh, they can have uh, so an identification of, of the threat, but as well they can provide immediately some rough location of the enemy emitter by exchanging the direction of arrival and providing up to the, let's say, uh, three-dimensional position which can be measured through the GPS and ENS, which are the uh, synchronizing, uh, uh, let's say, devices that are on board. Uh, this can be provided in two methods. One method is the triangulation. The triangulation, and here we have made a, a, an example, taking a baseline among one aircraft to another aircraft of 20 kilometer, and let's uh, assume that uh, with a very good uh, ESM, we can get a, an accuracy of direction finding of about one degree. Well, with that, uh, as you can see, according to the distance uh, in which we want to, to have the, the enemy aircraft detected, we have uh, a cumulative error probability, which is uh, the circular error probability, which is about uh, let's say, let's fix at about uh, the maximum, which is 200 kilometer, and we see that it is uh, a very crude, uh, a very crude uh, indication, because we are reaching a, a tremendous uh, number in, in an order of kilometer. So, as you can see, and this is being reported, we have just a notional indication of where this aircraft is, because it is about an uncertainty of 52 kilometers. But let's suppose uh, that through the real-time data link, we can exchange the time differential or arrival of the impulse of the enemy radar onto the three aircraft that are always displaced by 20 kilometers. So with an accuracy that I will now show you of timing, the accuracy is being made through the fact that we are measuring the intersection of two isochrone lines, which are hyperbolic lines, that provide you in an emitter which has some advantage farther. The first advantage is that uh, the emitter waveform can change rapidly, and so also the information that we have to exchange uh, aircraft to aircraft has to be also quite quick, very quick and fast in order to get it. But uh, the emitter tracking has to be initiated uh, immediately in order to know whether it is uh, a flying bus uh, aircraft or is coming onto the defended area. Thereafter, we, we know that as we are working in the silence mode, in the, what is called emission control mode, also the enemy may 
resort to that, but it has it can switch on and off intermittently or for a, for a small time. So we have to catch it immediately, get it in a, in a short time, and have be the possibility to locate it. So if we are using this time differential of arrival, and this is a, something that it is possible through the advent of a digital receiver on board the, the ESM equipment of uh, the electronic warfare, we, and we assume a accuracy of uh, measuring the time differential of about 20 nanoseconds, which is possible through the GPS and with some, uh, uh, let's say, smoothing of the data that can be achieved, always keeping uh, the 20 kilometer distance, we can get a circular error probability of only 1.25 kilometers, so one and a quarter. With this, we can begin, in reality, to track that emitter which is incoming, so we can know whether it is coming onto the defended area or is going elsewhere, because that is also a possibility. So that it is, uh, we can begin to track it. This, uh, uh, and in my paper, which is uh, uh, provided with, together with this presentation, is a, a is a technique that is not used only on the aircraft, but is used also on uh, most uh, uh, ground equipment to have a localization, loca location of air enemy on, uh, on the ground. But further, let's see another example. And this is uh, a coordination of uh, synchronized jamming operation. Here I place the, an example of having two escort jammers who are defending a, a wing or a striker going into attack onto uh, the uh, enemy area. We have to take care that currently all the integrated air defense system has a lot of counter countermeasures which are very difficult to be defeated. Especially most of the surveillance radars has two ECCM which are the side lobe blanker and the multi side lobe canceller. So this is uh, the normal, the usual say, if you uh, the usual situation of the PPI without uh, of a surveillance radar without side lobe blanker, whenever you are making a false target with a, with a jammer. But as soon as the side lobe blanker is made in operation you immediately see that uh, the false targets are only in one sector, and uh, moreover, you can define where the jammer is, because uh, through the strobing, sorry, I'm back. Okay, through the strobing, that means two surveillance radar may operate and triangulate on the jammer position. So if instead we are doing uh, uh, the conduct of the attack is uh, made uh, in, in, in a fact that it is synchronized to overcome the two counter countermeasures. We can apply a situation in which uh, the, we have two jammers which operate one against the side lobe and one against uh, the multi side lobe, ca multi -side lobe canceller. So the two are producing each one a an anti-side lobe, anti lobe blanking mode, which is a number of escort jammer, but uh, period of uh, jamming, but they are synchronized. They are not made by the same emitter, but are made by the two emitter in a synchronized mode. They are going into the enemy radar, producing the effect that that they are blanking whenever they are coming on the side lobe and on the multi side comp canceller being uh, intermittently made is providing that uh, the side lobe canceller is not capable to uh, see it. This allows the wing to come into the corridor that it is uh, required by the mission. So this is the final how they act 
one to the other, and they have to be synchronized in order to get this uh, capability. One other example is instead what is called the operation of a blinking uh, technique, which was very, very difficult to be made, and it is a technique which try to avoid the uh, tracking and uh, the final, uh, let's say, interception or the final, let's say, hit of a uh, semi-active uh, radar seeker into the one of the aircraft. By means of synchronized uh, technique, and this is, can be done by sharing the time, it is here is not uh, relevant to a PRI or so on, is a group of uh, similar, uh, say, equal time between the two. They have to be really equal because whenever there is a, also a small distortion about this uh, uh, equality, you have uh, the problem that one of the two will be hit. But if you are doing exactly this uh, synchronized, and this has been tested longly in, uh, uh, on the NATO exercise, you have that the missile is going onto the center of gravity of the two, of the two uh, say, em emissions, and so it comes within the spacing that you have of within the two aircraft. Suppose they are more than one kilometer apart, you have that uh, the missile goes about around half of that 500 meter. Same is uh, whenever you have uh, an action in which you have to imply a composite air operation, that means a wing is going into attack and it has been to, se to be separated. And here, the real-time data link provides in the coordination of what the wing has to do, but coordination in short time about what you have to do and how to jam most of uh, the threat we are on the ground, as well how you can work together in, in the same operation. How this is being, uh, so, uh, and this I have shown you these uh, advantages. How this is, is being done? This is being done, as I've said at the, the beginning, by using uh, the planar active phase array antenna which are installed on board the aircraft. Planar means that we can provide uh, direction of arrival and a beam which can be steered both in azimuth as well as in elevation. Can work also with a linear antenna in which we have uh, the steering is only in one plane. So in order to operate in uh, a emission control uh, situation, uh, the real-time data link must have a low probability of detection. This means that the active phase array is capable to steer a relatively narrow beam in the direction of the other platform, and it needs to have a very low side lobes. Uh, with the example that I have shown you, it will be nearly impossible for any ESM at uh, a distance larger than the one of the wing to detect such a real-time data link. Moreover, this can be placed any time at a different frequency because the active uh, phased array have a very large bandwidth, more than one and a half octave. So you can select on the mission preparation whichever frequency you would like to use during that mission, which could be different from a, sec a subsequent mission of, of, the, of the item. This can be done through the fact that we can provide phased array which are pro capable to cover up to 180 degree of sector coverage. So, a cup and this through the fact that we have a module, transmit and receive modules, which have a double output. This double output may go to two radiating elements, and the two radiating elements can be two radiating elements of an array. So an array which is at 90 degree, one with respect to the other. And this can be 
steered immediately from one point to another in a very, very short time. This allows you to have a complete coverage with only two phased array, as this is the situation, in which you have a block of uh, the modules, which is in here, two phases uh, of uh, radiating element, which are at 90 degree one to the other, thus each covering 180 degree. And so with two of those phased array, you can communicate on whatever direction around you within the coverage which is allowed by those system and have this link available for any, in any condition to the distance that it is proportional to whatever uh, power you want to introduce according to the distance at which you want to communicate. Because uh, the possibility is uh, that you can have a complete control of uh, the amplitude and the power to be transmitted. This is done and all the link is now confined, and this is the additional functionality, into the dig digital radio frequency memory and digital receiver that are already on board of uh, the uh, electronic warfare system, the airborne electronic warfare system. And in this digital radio frequency memory and digital receiver, we have associated all the modulators and the modulators of the real-time data link. And with this, I have given you an idea of what it is possible to the introduction of technology into the systems that we are producing, as well as how it can be added as a possible additional functionality on, onto the system. I am ready to any question. Uh, the microphone, please, because I'm, I'm not hearing, but I, otherwise I am coming there. <laughs> no, okay, no, no, okay. Mike? Yes. Sure. Yes. Well, first, are, are, I, we, are we doing that? I can respond. First, not, al not always you need uh, to have it uh, for the complete uh, effective radiated power of uh, that array. It depends on the distance at which you want to transmit. It is sufficient, as I have said, according to the distance of the two aircraft to use uh, not the complete ERP, but also the, the reduced ERP. In that case, you can also use some tapering into the, into the pattern of the transmitted pattern of uh, the uh, uh, phased array, and you can have very good side lobes in any other direction, so avoiding to be detected by any type of uh, ESM, whichever is the current sensitivity also with digital receivers of those uh, ESM systems, which can be on the, on the opposite side. Thank that it is uh, the property of having the double capacity of steering the beam, directive beam, plus control of, uh, let's say, of uh, the shape and the side lobe of, uh, that we can transmit. more questions, please. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, we are using APA here for uh, the purpose of linking, uh, data linking. Now, I just want to know the APA is being used for reception, transmission, as well as for linking of the two neighboring aircrafts. 
are we not sacrificing in terms of the jamming performance if you use the upper link for uh, data transmission purpose? And second question is, what is the kind of data transfer rates we are looking at when we are talking about this data link? Okay. First, uh, as you have seen, I have uh, made, taken two examples which are giving you already a response. You are far, one from uh, the enemy radar, the other attack radar, and you want to know which is the range at which you are seeing him, which, uh, whether it is a, a dangerous one or not, if it is a threat or not a threat. As I have said, the, the purpose is to, make, to get not only a fix but also a track in order to know whether it is coming onto you or going elsewhere. And this requires that you need to have such a real-time data link. You cannot do by having samples that are moving uh, so from, from a time to a time that the uh, aircraft, enemy aircraft is making a lot of, a lot of uh, space uh, coming into you. The second, we are not sacrificing it uh, during uh, the jamming because uh, you have to note that I have said these are very in important whenever you have a wing of uh, aircraft, each one has in, having its own uh, jammer and the, also of the two escort jammer, one, once you have fixed which is the timing and the synchronization you want, you need only to transmit uh, a very short message in order to enable the synchronization of, uh, of the two, of the two uh, let's say, aircraft uh, which has to perform such uh, functionality. And you also talked about synchronous jamming. Doesn't it put more stress on uh, or doesn't it require more data transfer rates? Mm, no, not, not, not really, not really. You can, you can perform that uh, and uh, by for sure, once you have done, you have not to make a change, a continuous change in order to be synchronized. But once you have synchronized your timing, this can be, be kept for a long time, and it is nearly the time your synthesizer is not adding further phase noise to, to, to that. So it's a matter of how the system is being, is being built. But it is not consuming more time that uh, required. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I got a couple of questions. Yes. Can this data link work by itself without the operational data link on the aircraft? Uh, the yes. reason the reason is uh, that you got highly selective uh, uh, reception and transmission. Yes. I so have, in, yes, okay. I have placed this uh, because uh, this is the added value that can be done. I am not uh, uh, supposing that uh, we are removing the, uh, the data link which is present on the aircraft because that is something that uh, is uh, needed for the interoperability of the wing. So that has to be safe there because it's exchanging data not only with another aircraft but it's exchanging data with all the network that you have. So that is independent. I have devoted that only for the electronic warfare operations to do this. It can be used in, in, a, in time that you have not to use electronic warfare for other purposes. But, for example, as I've said, the next future is that uh, to exploit the capability to exchange rapidly imaging from one to another. But that is, has to come because that will uh, uh, require that we need a lot of time to exchange those data. And this uh, can, uh, uh, say, prevent the operation of the jamming whenever you are acquiring. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much, Dr. Martin.